our next guest, um, which is Dawn French, and um, anything Dawn French is, does, I always believe, is worth consideration, whether it's comedy, whether it is acting, whether it is writing, because, um, Dawn, in recent years, uh, you have become a best-selling author. Uh, lovely to see you. The new book is out, and the new book um, is called Because of You. Now, um, what is Because of You all about? Well, it's a book about um, identity, really, but it starts with two women giving birth on the same night in the same ward. And then the very next morning, or they both have baby daughters, and the next morning, um, one of the women leaves the hospital with a baby daughter and the other one doesn't. And the one who leaves has taken the other one's daughter. And then we cut to 18 years later when that child is growing up and discovering that the mother she always thought was her birth mother is not, and she finds out what her mother did. And it's about all the fallout of that, really. I would imagine it's a huge fallout, I and mean, it's an unthinkable scenario for, for any parent. But I presume you're exploring then, is it, you know, nature or nurture that makes a parent-child relationship? Because everything this, this young woman knows or believes to be about her and her family and her upbringing and her background and her belonging uh, suddenly all cave in. That's right, that's right. So I'm really interested in issues about identity and family and belonging and whether we are made of the people who gave birth to us, whose blood we have running in our veins, or whether we're made of those who raised us, who stepped up for us, who are always there for us. I'm, I'm interested in this debate, and I haven't got any answers, if I'm honest, but I want to ask the questions. And I, what I really wanted to do was place at the middle of my book a woman who does something so unbelievably, unthinkably awful uh, that you would think was unforgivable, and then how we, as the reader and the other characters, find our way to forgiving her because lots of things unfold in this story. And I know it sounds a bit, um, it sounds a bit humorless, but there is plenty of humour in there. But I'm interested in those big central crunchy themes. And well, you see, a lot of people will, will you know, they hear your name and they will think um, humour. The subjects that we have talked about, which are very serious, quite dark um, as well. How do you, in what ways do you inject humour into all of that? Well, isn't it funny? I personally, in my real life, find that humour is the funniest when it's almost naughty and oughtn't to be there and in the tricky, spiky, more difficult moments. So if I'm writing um, a book like this, which is, has got quite a hefty central theme, then, of course, that's when you want the levity. So that's, of course, when I'm going to introduce a, a wonderful big character who is one of the dads involved in the story, who's a huge narcissist, so I can enjoy writing that. That amused me a lot, and I wrote... Um, a detective inspector involved with this with this inquiry, who who is a person who has malapropisms all the time, who's got loads of word wasps and who trips up on his own words the whole time. And of course, I've got this young woman growing up, so I've got the mother and daughter, and I, you know, there's loads of humour in that. And I, I presume, Dawn, that you drew on some personal experience because you and, and Lenny, Lenny Henry, um, adopted your, your lovely daughter, Billy. And so there must have been conversations yes. during her life that you've had with her about nature, nurture, belonging, family. Um, did she help you out with any of this? Did you discuss it before you wrote it? Uh, well, this book is not autobiographical in any way and the character is definitely not my daughter. But, of course, I'm interested in those themes when it comes to nature and nurture. And, really, my interest in that started with my own mother, who uh, was on the panel of lots of adoption and fostering um, organisations and who spoke to me about that long before I adopted my daughter. So I've been thinking about this a lot of my life and, and I'm interested in it. And I think that it could go either way, to be honest. You know, there's interesting moral kind of dilemmas at the centre of all of it.
right? Well, that's the book, and good luck with that. It's called Because of You. Um, Thanks. so many other yes. things. I pick up the paper, you're there all the time, either saying that you won't take part in Strictly, <laughs> you couldn't think of anything worse type thing, um, and, and that you're in the movies, uh, Death on the Nile. Uh, yes. tell, tell us about that, first of all. Um, well, let me just clear up the thing about Strictly. I love Strictly. Let's just get that straight. Yeah. Um, and that was a casual comment I made with Jennifer on a podcast that we did recently where she was saying, oh, I know what would happen if we did Strictly. We'd be put in the oldies section and nobody would take us seriously. And I said, yeah, because I'm a brilliant dancer. I would want to be taken very, very seriously and I'd want to win. So that's why I'm not doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she, doesn't want to be like, she doesn't want to be like uh, you. No, she doesn't want to be she like She doesn't me. want to end up, no. end up with Stop Anton. Stop it, no. You just no, know, as soon as you get Anton, the it's that like the kiss the of case. death, isn't you it? You stop it about it's Anton. True. It's true. Anyway, back to Death on the Nile. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Death on the Nile, blimey, it's um, a huge, big Hollywood blockbuster uh, directed by Ken Branagh, who I thought was fairly brave, actually, to cast Jennifer and I together, because if we're together in a great big film, normally we're taking the mick. Uh, but we didn't with this because, you know, it's a big, proper grown-up film with a proper grown-up director that you want to raise your game for. What a fantastic guy. No. But it was the best fun. We were there with Gal Gadot and Army Hammer. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, I think Branagh is an absolute genius, both as a, a period actor and as, um, you know, as a director. I think he is top bloke. When would we be likely to see this, bearing in mind everything that's going on with cinemas and whatever? Yeah, well, that's the problem, isn't it? I think it was supposed to have happened in at the end of August, September. Then it was moved because we thought people would be going back to the cinemas and into the theatres a few months later. Then it's been moved again. So actually, as of this moment, I don't know. I think it's early next year. I mean, in a way, cinemas have had it better than theatres because you can show a film 12 times a day mm. um, and you can you know, socially distance inside the cinemas. So I don't know why more people aren't going to the cinema theatres, however, a whole other thing. And I'm personally in massive grief about the situation with theatres and I'm feeling hopeless about it, although I know that soon there are answers to come. There are ways that we are going to be able to gather yeah. again because hopefully, hopefully. our lives are just so much the poorer. Yeah, yeah. they certainly are. Um, something on a, on a nicer note, uh, it was your birthday on the 11th of October. Happy birthday. Yes. And hopefully our cameraman has got Thank with you, him a Ruth, gift. Thank um, you, but Ruth... We've got a gift has for he? you. Yes. The cameraman a gift. might have a well, gift. Well, we sent it via because, him. Oh, from oh. us. Yes, so that's from Eamon and I. Because I was a bit... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The chocolate yes. eclair toffee <laughs> sweet. Yes. Do you know about what's been going on with this? You must do. It's been a terrible... Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, don't you I was you wondering work. why a little gift that was well, engraved from Tiffany's hadn't turned up. Well, no, no, the Every, real, the real gift was going to be those... Do you know when you meet people, you kiss them? But because of COVID, you and me can't do that. Yes. So that was, that was the real gift. That was the gift was planned. So we did chocolates instead. <laughs> Uh, listen, we've got to get into the kitchen with Alison now, but we know you like a chocolate eclair sweetie before bedtime, so enjoy. Do uh, I do. I have five. Five every night. That's my girl. That's my girl. Dawn, lovely Ruth has five as well, but they're not chocolates, I'll tell you. Uh, go. Thank you very much, <laughs> Dawn, you, Dawn French, because of you, is her new book, and you're going to see it Christmas <laughs> on Sky as well. Christmas special, Roald and Beatrix, the tale of the curious mice, where Dawn plays Beatrix Potter. So much yeah. to talk to her about. Come back and talk I wish to we had an hour, but we're going time. to have soup.